I got a word. I got a word. Went to Transformation Church today, and boy, what a word. It's just hard to imagine this guy being a Christian. There's a famous quote by Charles Spurgeon that says, a time will come when instead of the shepherds feeding the sheep, we'll have clowns entertaining the goats. Well, I think that time is here. Oh, why y'all ooing and I? Y'all seen this 40-foot trampoline in here? Far be it for me to say who's saved and who's not saved, but sometimes people just give you signs, give you glaring declarations of who they are, and sometimes you ought to believe them. You ought to just trust the signs sometimes. And with him, with Mike Todd and that church, it is hard to imagine that this man is a Christian. Now, I do use one of his statements quite often. I think it's a very apt statement to use in many cases. You can be saved and stupid. Tweet that. You can be saved and stupid. Yeah, so you can be saved and stupid, but I also know that you can look like you're saved and be stupid. And I think that's what's happening here. Matter of fact, I don't even, I don't even think we can say that, that he looks like he's saved. He doesn't act like it. And then the people that are there, they go there for this show. This, what he is, is a carnival barker. What he is, is a ringmaster. This is a circus. And like he says, clowns entertaining goats. Maybe this is another clown entertaining other clowns or people who don't know any better. It's hard to even imagine the folks that go there would actually want the word. Here's what the Bible says. Peter says this. He says, like newborn babies long for the pure milk of the word of God, uh, for the word so that you may grow in it in respect to salvation. If you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. That's indeed if you have tasted. It's hard to imagine that these people have. Thank you, Lord, for my word. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Y'all look at my word. The irony of him saying, thank you, Lord, for my word. Well, you're not, it's not the word. And then just think about this. A giant 40-foot trampoline in the middle of the sanctuary where people should be sitting to hear the word. You have this there to put on a demonstration, to put on a show. Look what God has given me. Big old word. An expansive word. I'm sitting on my word. But the potential for this word to actually take me higher is based on what I do after I get it. The word of God, and I think he's speaking that he's got some sort of individual word, some sort of little prophetic word, their own little private interpretation or inspiration from the Lord is what he's speaking of. But the word he should be focusing on is the word of God. And in that regard, none of this stuff is to be applied how he's using it. And most people, when they get a word from God, it's not a catalyst to take them higher. It's something that becomes pressure that they get under. Oh, you weren't expecting the example to go here. We were expecting you to do any and everything. Why? Because that is who you are. You tend to do ridiculous and crazy things. You tend to make a spectacle of the sanctuary. <laughs> Yeah, put these over here. The hoes love the hostess. Okay, here we How far on the edge are we going to go? I said we're going to do everything short of sin. And I'm thinking about how unequipped I am and how much team I don't have and how many, how many people have left me before. And so now I'm under the word. Just out here obeying God, trying to, trying to get this word off the ground. Trying to get this business off. How come every time these people get a word, it's something about them doing something like growing a business or in increasing their income, something that's positive as far as they're, they're concerned, something that, you know, it's, it's a good word. They never get a word that says from the Lord, study more, uh, fall on your knees more, fall on your face more, pray more. They never get that kind of word. They only get words that speak about how good things are going to be. Just step out. It's really their word is more motivational than anything else. This is a complete different experience. I will believe what the word has said and what he said over my life. And some of y'all are scared. Now, how many of you all knew that once you saw this trampoline in the middle of the sanctuary, that at some point in time, Mike Todd would get up on it and jump it? I mean, I did. Who? That, that's to be expected. You're going to use that to put on some sort of performance. Because you've never jumped that high before. You would rather me get on the word of God and sit on it. 
think what we'd rather you do is, is to get the word of God, to read it, to teach it, and to lead people by it. Lead yourself by it. Let the word actually resonate in you. So, I've never been able to dunk in my whole life. But if you give me this trampoline, 10 feet, 12 feet, you can take that mug up to 14. I would... Keeping in mind, this is a pastor, Peter says, 1 Peter 1.15 says, but like the Holy One who calls you, that is, if indeed he did call you, be holy yourselves in all your behavior. Not like this, in all your behaviors. Why? Because it's written to be holy. Why? Be as the Lord, your God, as he is holy, for I am holy. Be that way. Be different. Be set apart. Don't be like the world. But instead, we've got this person who wants to be like the world. He wants to entertain the world. It's time for you to stand on the word of God. And this is the thing. It takes action from here. Now, the irony of what he just said is time for you to stand on the word of God when you're not even using the word of God. But it's time for you to start not just standing on it. I'm going to write the vision. I'm going to tell people about it. I'm going to be known for it. It don't even have to actually happen tomorrow, but I'm going to have faith for it. I'm actually going to build my stamina. I'm actually going to do something. So you must it. The fact that you would do that, all this is, is a show. But I'm going to have faith for it. I'm actually going to build my stamina. I'm actually going to do something. So you must it. But what would happen if everybody started flipping on the things that God told them to do? What if we started getting hyped? We would be like a city on the hill. Oh, we would be able to be seen. And that's it. We would be able to be seen. That's the whole thing that you're after. Let's just tell the truth, shame the devil. It's what you're after. You are trying to be seen. That's all you care about. You're not after the souls of these people. You're not after these people learning and growing in the word of God. Why? Because that's not what you go to Transformation Church to do. That's not why you go. It's not. You don't go there to get that. You go there to get this, what we're seeing here. Thank you for being with us for the last nine years. But if you don't have faith to stand on God's word, I don't need you in this next season. And then these are harsh words, but your whole ministry is trash. You are a clown. You are a clown entertaining goats who they themselves may very well be clowns as well. You don't have anybody there in your ear. You've complained about, we should just pray for you, which we have, that the people around you would tell you what's right or wrong. Well, they don't. Clearly, you have no, you need adult supervision and there are no adults around you. You've got people there who don't know the word of God. You bring on people to your church who don't know the word of God. And you bring in other people who to come and watch you not know the word of God, further giving them the credence, further giving them the validation to live their lives without the word of God. You are a joke. You are a disgrace. You are an embarrassment to the body of Christ. I don't think you are a part of the body of Christ. If you are, maybe it, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible that you could be. You can be saved and stupid. Tweet that. You can be saved and stupid. That would be the best thing that we could say about you, that you are saved, but extremely stupid. That could be the case, or it may just be what it looks like. You're not saved. You are a foolish person who indulges in the foolish things. And so like Paul, I'm with him, 2 Corinthians 11, 12. And what I'm doing, I will continue to do in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their boast admission that they work on the same terms as we do. And for, for Mike Todd, he does not. We are not on the same team. He has no interest in promoting holiness. He has no interest in promoting the word of God. He has only the interest in promoting himself. As a matter of fact, have you ever noticed when you watch Mike Todd, when you watch his sermons, when you watch his shows, or you go to his, I'm say his sermons, his shows, his his group meetings. Have you ever noticed how often when he's there, he dresses to match the environment? That's why you see some of these little weird, these little shenanigans that he that he does, such as pouring syrup on the altar, what have you, or I guess at an altar, pouring syrup on the Bible. That's a thing now. I lift my hands to give you the glory. I lift my hands to give praise and we will praise you. It's just a temple. Syrup all over the communion. Don't care so much. Over the Bible, too. Y'all, stop acting like you care about this. Let me make. Or having the little goggles, with, having the little $4,000 Apple goggles, whatever those little things are. All of the, all of the shenanigans that we see, we, we miss 
what he's wearing because we see the little shenanigans. But he dresses just like the environment. They spent all this money to fix up the stage and to then color coordinate it with his outfits. That's because appearance matters to him. That's why he dresses the way he dresses. He's a flamboyant clown. He is just like a clown is. He brings attention to himself with those bright colors and the foolish things that he says to entertain people. Like Charles Spurgeon says, he's entertaining, looks like a bunch of goats, because if they were actual sheep, they would desire the word of God. And we look around the country and we see all these other churches doing the exact same thing. We call them churches for lack of a better word. They're not churches. These organizations, these community gatherings is what they are. And they're doing the same thing, trying to entertain people. The Bible is clear. The, and as far as we're concerned, these are people whose mouths must be silent, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. They, I promise you, there is big money in this. I'm not against a church bringing in offerings and so forth, but you want to keep up this show. You want to keep up this charade. And so in order to keep people coming, what do you have to do? You have to do more. Whatever you did this week, you've got to outdo it that week and then the next week and the next week. It's just like a circus. I remember back in the day when Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus used to come to town and they would put on a show for about a week, week and a half. But after a while, people would get tired of seeing a monkey jump through a hoop. After seeing the same old dog and pony show, people jumping through hoops and trampoline artists like we see here, that circus would have to get up, pack up, and leave town because folks get tired of that. Well, not here. They're not going to pack up and move. What they have to do is come up with a new act, something new, another act in the three ring circus for them to put on. Never the word. The word is not on display. Find someone that goes there and says, man, this word is so deep and so challenging. We learned this about Solomon. We learned this about Nehemiah. We understood this about this particular dispensation. We understood this about the Holy Spirit, how he works. We understood this in the word. We don't get that from here, which is why that is not a place for anyone who loves the Lord to go. It's a dangerous place. Yeah, it's colorful. There's lighting. There's music. It's a festive attitude, but that's how it's going to be on your way to hell. Going to a place like that is a dangerous place to go. And this is why every believer needs to be pointing these things out, warning folks, moving folks away from that, steering them towards places where the pastor, the preacher, the church is helping folks to learn the scriptures, guide them in the scriptures, and they have a healthy appetite for the scriptures. And just when you think that Mike Todd couldn't do something to outdo the last thing he did, He's going to always prove you that he can and he will. And for that reason, leave him alone. Stay away from this person. Leave and never come back.